So the studio. <laughs> Right. Well, you just never know. You just never know. Quantum light work. Wow, that's great. Let's get started. Are you ready for this? It's like you just never know. Now, light, quantum light work. I love it. That sounds really wonderful. I love to dive into that. I love to see what that actually means. Mm. Yeah, great. So I'm happy that you joined in this discovery and taking part in the quantum experiment that you volunteered for by being present here. That's really great. So there's nothing to fear, as we know. So no worries. You're surrounded by the love of God. So. You're just fine. It's great. Great to meet you here in this place that has nothing to do with any three-dimensionality or maybe just a little bit for just one moment. You might recognize that today too, that it's important to be present here, exactly here. So that's <clears throat> that's another, like I, I talk a bit mysterious this way, but there's actually a discovery to make. Uh, again, it's like, yeah, I thought that I'm not a body, I'm not here, and none of this is so. And but for this one instant, what happens? So there's a there's a transition moment in which something happens, and we have some some real experts today at work um, that are coming over to show us something, and um, so one of the experts is in. Uh, a physicist and he is interviewed by a biology engineer um, so what that's gonna give us I've, I've no idea but it's all related to an idea of life life like life yeah life how do I know that I'm alive some even might have had this question in their mailbox it's like how do I know I'm alive well, is there any three-dimensional proof for it um, that is lasting? No. So I don't have to look for it there then. But how do I know I'm alive? So what is life in the first place? Now this is where the say where the scientists come in and will try to define what life is, and we will try to undo that um, definition by the very experience of life. So that's going to be interesting. So it, is it quantum light work? Yes, it is. It is because the say the limit, yeah, the definitions that are given by science are not going to do it, and everyone knows it. Like, how, what is more dead than a definition of life? Right? That makes sense. So there are more of these kind of things that make sense that we will say give to each other in this in this moment that we're together. Now, the main reason for coming together is, in fact, say, actually being able to meet, being able to come into communion, communication, feeling connectedness to one another, to being here, being present, being completely present here. Um, yeah, so how, how are we going to do that? Well, that will be the first, um, say, quantum experiment and for that i invited an uh, say an enlightened master from from india sri aurobindo he will uh, share the words that we speak today in the meditation and sri aurobindo is uh, yeah kind of known for his book too like savitri it's it's a 2000 page uh, poetic uh, spiritual poetic book which will yeah you get lost in it there's actually no way of getting started in it you go from one sentence to the other and suddenly you get it what he shares in a beautiful language that no englishman can speak like this advanced english almost no no offense though like almost no english person can speak like that 
but he wrote it from just like that divine inspired divinely inspired really beautiful so we use that and now there's another part in uh, life divine there's another book that he wrote um, in life divine there are some ideas that are being shared uh, that have exactly to do with the moment of transition from say the 3d to the 4d and i thought i was so well uh, put in words that you almost like feel it happening or your eyes are opening for that moment uh, there's such a lovely inclusion of the three-dimensional world you could say there's such a lovely inclusion of it that it literally helps you to transcend the whole yeah the whole idea so that's really beautiful that's what we're going to do after that uh, so that's I'm always sharing my program a little bit in the beginning because that that can be easy to to continue participating in this to really go for the deep experience of this uh, say quantum light work because it, superficially there's not much new superficially there seems to be not too much happening but when you dive into it a world opens up and a world in, in which you actually become the experiment yourself and which is great so enough words we're going to quiet down in a blaze of light um, using the words of Sri Aurobindo I uh, say come up with some music that's hopefully supported in a way that you can deeply relax and and say um, go with that and in the second time that we repeat this um, there's also a French translation that Michel will read and to make it complete, you could say. Above the stretch and blaze of cosmic sight, above the silence of the wordless thought, formless creator of immortal forms, nameless, investitured with the name divine, transcending time's hours, transcending timelessness, the mighty mother sits in lucent calm, and holds the eternal child upon her knees, attending the day when he shall speak of fate. There is the image of our future's hope. There's the sun for which all darkness waits. There's the imperishable harmony, the world's contradictions climb to her and are one. There's the truth of which the world's truths are shreds. The light of which the world's ignorance is the shade. Till truth draws back the shade that it has cast. The love our hearts call down to heal all strife. The bliss for which the world's derelict sorrows yearn. Thence comes the glory sometimes seen on earth, the visits of Godhead to the human soul, the beauty in the dream on nature's face, there the perfection born from eternity calls to it the perfection born in time, the truth of God surprising human life, the image of God overtaking finite shapes. Au-dessus de l'étendue et de l'éclat de la vue cosmique, au-dessus du silence de la pensée sans parole, créatrice sans forme de forme, immortelle, sans nom investie du nom divin, transcendant les heures du temps, transcendant l'intemporalité, la puissante mère est assise dans un calme lucent et tient l'enfant éternel à genoux, attendant le jour où il parlera au destin. 
Il y a l'image de l'espérance de notre avenir. Il y a le soleil qui attend toutes les ténèbres. Il y a l'harmonie impérissable. Les contradictions du monde grimpent jusqu'à elle et ne font qu'une. Il y a la vérité, dont les vérités du monde sont des lambeaux. La lumière, dont l'ignorance du monde est l'ombre. Jusqu'à ce que la vérité retire l'ombre qu'elle a projetée. L'amour que nos cœurs appellent pour guérir tous les conflits. La félicité à laquelle aspirant les chagrins abandonnés du monde. De là vient la gloire parfois vue sur terre. Les visites de Dieu à l'âme, l'âme humaine, la beauté et le rêve sur le visage de la nature. Là, la perfection née de l'éternité. Appelle à elle la perfection née dans le temps. La vérité de Dieu surprend la vie humaine. L'image de Dieu dépassant les formes finies. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining in the meditation. Like, wow, that is so beautiful. So I want to just pull back the last five sentences of the meditation because I, I, it's, it's, it's beautiful. That's what I'm, all I'm saying. It's beautiful. So just here's uh, Sri Aurobindo in his, I read the last couple of sentences. The visits of Godhead to the human soul, the beauty and the dream on nature's face, there is the perfection born from eternity, calls to it the perfection born in time, the truth of God's surprising human life, the image of God overtaking finite shapes, So this is to me like unbelievable, unbelievably beautiful. Like the beauty in the dream on nature's face, that there the perfection born from eternity calls to it the perfection born in time. The truth of God surprising human life, the image of God overtaking finite shapes. Like that is such a sweet beautiful um say inclusion of this you could call the three-dimensional place in in your awakening it's like it's a perfect description of an holy instant or of a miracle it's like a sudden shift into invisibility but where does it take place first here it takes place here where you find yourself not anywhere else where you find yourself suddenly you're lifted into invisibility like literally the recognition of you as the christ as the perfection itself like recognizing that for just one instant being open to receive that letting it come to you but what comes to you is the perfection from heaven comes to you in the same in the same moment it's like a cosmic instant like a cosmic blaze as it is being said here it's like it's, it's an instantaneous occurrence like i have no other word for it it's an occurrence but so beautifully put with with total uh, say embrace and total love for all of it and and that's exactly the portal where it takes place so it's like <laughs> yeah um that is that is beautiful to experience and that is such a lovely description so it's it's great to it's like i i will share it um share this picture too i'll make make something in on the website or so i don't know like this It's, it's great to present this in a certain way just because it's so lovely and so that's why i wanted to drag you in so to speak in order to uh, say share the joy that i'm feeling in in discovering this now 
I will not associate too much with Sri Aurobindo. Um, I definitely have a, like a great connection with him. Um, so he, um, yeah, he will come back in a moment too when we when we come back. In fact, a bit of the same with the same theme, because I I heard it just today. It's like I heard this exact point where he's talking about, and and that to me is so interesting in in say doing the quantum light work or meeting you in this in this holy instant, recognizing the perfection of each other for just a second and push like literally like being lifted out of this into an uh, yeah invisibility now these are words that we have used in other meetings too like the shift into invisibility so that in that sense it comes back it's just great to hear um, say someone so-called someone else say it just a little different but still not any of the beauty and uh, of the occurrences taken taken away from it so that whatever works to to move you to to make you know, myself see how lucky i am to receive this in this instant that i share with you and i'm so incredibly lucky that is like mind-blowing literally so thank you for sharing that of joining in that that's all i can say is like that's so that's so lovely now <laughs> it's interesting to um, bring in some scientists now it's really interesting you might feel that too it's like it's interesting now to to just uh, the guys in the video are doing it really great it's like there's uh, there's some playfulness in it that is really interesting uh, so i love to share that with you just to to see them trying to formulate an idea of what is life how can life be defined what is actually life really you know like um okay so i'm curious what they're going to tell us uh, it's it's probably three minutes or so so i'll i'll stop the video when that part is over the video continues you can watch it anytime but like this little part is what is life is really the question so it's a PBS uh, part of the documentary uh, this in the series Be Smart. I'm I make no attempt to talk me out of this. <laughs> oh. Okay, so what did you learn about this? That's a good question. It's like, what is life? Can you tell me now? No, you can't. No, you can't. Why would you have to define it if you were it? So, so that would be the easy way out, isn't it? It's like there would be the easy way out to to just say like, well, no, I'm what life is, and it doesn't need to be described. Like, I'm breathing it. I'm I'm it. Uh, but the funny part was that. Um, this idea came to me it's like how do you in fact know that you're alive now if you ask that question and come up with answers you're destroying actually the the, the revelation that's that's given with it you could say that the and that is the answer so this is how i started my day by asking this question and and not uh, say formulating an answer but letting the cosmos the universe tell me what life is and what it is to be alive and i had a great laugh it was so wonderful it's like so the whole thing is it's like ask the universe what it means to be alive what does it mean to be alive like ask the universe this is where the transformation or the yeah the quantum light work has everything to do with with that question you this is the question that you're looking for the answer but actually you're getting yourself ready to receive the answer so we can we can talk about big bang we can talk about everything that's happening so-called in the history of the universe but what if i'm all that and what if that is happening to me i'm preparing myself for for this big bang in me you could say in which i discover what 
the, the answer is to the question, what does it mean to be alive? Or how can I know that I'm alive? Like, the universe will not fail to answer you that. Now, the only question is then, are you ready to receive that? And yes, of course, so let it happen. And, and you can stop defining it. So with science, it's of course um, interesting that the dissociation from where it's asking questions about is obvious. In other words, like it, uh, the scientists forget to include themselves in what they're actually asking, and they try to say mentally, intellectually, get what is going on. And this was the one thing that you didn't have to do in order to receive the answer. This, this sounds really easy when I say it like this, but, well... <laughs> uh, see, the thing was, the thing is that, that this is, um, say, a discovery. So, so, in all of this, everything is energy, we know this. It, it is even being shared here too, it's like, one thing is the same. The energy did not disappear. No, it was transformed into a different forms and all this and and blah de blah de blah and still does like an increasing factor of chaos, you could say. Now, <clears throat> the description that you could give God or the the universe is is like a state of pure abstraction, like purity in the abstraction, completely abstract. There's no definition of form in it, no, it is completely abstract. But it is not chaotic at the same time. Now, good luck with that, scientists. Try to figure that out, you can't. So don't even try. It saves you a lot of time not to do so. So, so this is uh, one little part that I wanted to introduce here, and that is like the impossibility of defining it, because life cannot be defined, which is really lovely. Like, no, if you are that, how could you define, how could you limit your idea of, um, um, say, of life with a definition? There's no need for that. Okay, so next step. Now, coming back to our friend Sri Aurobindo, that is a bit of our guest today too, is, um, is, is this idea of the three-dimensional universe, the three-dimensional living, like the living organisms, the you, you being here in this three-dimensional idea of yourself, remembering your godliness, having a moment in which literally heaven comes down, if you want, in your consciousness to, to connect with the open space that you have left to, to experience it. Literally, perfection, recognizing perfection. Um, it's a beautiful, say, metaphor of um, what, is, what can be found in uh, Sri Aurobindo's um, piece that I'm going to share. Now, I, I have to say, like right away, I try to look for um, relatively short expressions of him. And I had like, okay, I'll do two sentences, but you will see, like the first sentence, okay, there's maybe 12 words. But then the second sentence is probably like a paragraph almost. It's just one sentence. So I don't know what to do with that. But I'm going to share it with you anyway. Because it's lovely. And it's really doable to to get into it. So now I um, have to find a way to... That was not so hard. <clears throat> So here, this is from Life Divine. Um, if modern, I'm just going to read first. You, it might not be directly clear, but that's okay. Like, don't try to really get it right away. You can try, but... If modern materialism were simply an unintelligence acquiescence in the material life, the advance might be indefinitely 
delayed. But since its very soul is the search for knowledge, it will be unable to cry a halt as it reaches the barriers of sense knowledge and of the reasoning from sense knowledge. Its very rush will carry it beyond and the rapidly rapidity sorry and sureness with which it it has embraced the visible universe is only an earnest of the energy and success which we may hope to see repeated in the conquest of what lies beyond once the stride is taken that crosses the barrier we see already that advance in its that advance in its obscure beginnings now this i wanted to say use um see here it is I'll, I'll translate it into my own words here i translate it here in my own words so it's like this is what i read in it which is really lovely like even in these scientists that we just saw you see there's an there's an curiosity to discover something like that is so intense like so intense need to discover something like you could say like that is driven by a soul that wants to unite with the knowledge that it recognizes itself to be you know otherwise that would never happen so it is like it it cannot stay in uh, three-dimensionality or materialism it cannot stay there now it 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 has to move beyond that and uh, the sole drive to do so is is like you can't ignore it uh, no matter how hard you try you can't ignore it to look beyond the border to to go beyond your limits to see beyond like that's also part of the of science you could say is like yeah we know this these are the facts now we're going to look a little bit beyond that we're going to look beyond the facts we're going to test a couple of hypotheses like it might be that there is a god <laughs> or it might be that there is something that we cannot understand but which is an intrinsic part of ourselves that could be like of course you're you're stating the obvious you will have to state something quite obvious otherwise you're not able to research it as a scientist so that there can be pleasant surprises in that that actually take you out of this um, say construct that you have made to discover something it, it's more like the universe recognizes the soul cry in even in and say in material belief temporarily but it, it can hear the soul's cry so that suddenly there can be a connection there can be say an holy instant you could say or you can be pleasantly surprised of your shift into invisibility and um, you could call it an aha moment or a eureka moment like you discover something that brings you beyond your scope now this is this is of course in science also recognizable but the same in in the process that you find yourself in into say coming to know yourself and coming to know yourself is a discovery it's not research and it's also not putting the facts together so that you know okay now i have to make an hypothesis like the scientific uh, method will not work here um, so coming to know the truth of who you are is actually going the other way around you get out of the way and and, and your consciousness can say show you who you are the same as the question like what does it mean to be alive or how how do i know i'm alive not answering that question but keeping your mind open is how you can receive the answer well you can say that the genius of that is is very recognizable in the perfection of the universe you know that's that is applying your genius you could say 
So there is your eureka moment and it brings you home in this time. Like you didn't even find what you were looking for. You, you actually found yourself home in a way that you had no idea about. Now this is the quantum light work that we're talking about, in fact. It's like, is it scientific? Yeah, sure, to a certain extent. And the scientific part can also be psychological. Like, there's no problem with using psychology in coming to this. Not that we're psychologists, no, but we actually say to look at the process that are taking place in your mental system, you could say, you can come to a, a place where you release the fear, where you actually see that the fear diminishes when, when you see the futility of this place, for instance. So it's like everything comes together. And by you, um, say, not excluding any part of it, you can use everything for your awakening, like everything is used for your awakening, so you don't have to sort it out what will be helpful for you. No, this will come to you in beautiful ways. So here too, in, okay, the definition of life, yeah, try to look for it. Well, why not ask the question, what is life? I want to know what life is. I want to discover that. Not as a scientific experiment, but more as an I want to set up this communication with, with the universe and say, opening up a new experience for myself. So otherwise I'm limiting it to a scientific experiment. That's not necessary. So your mind continuously tries to narrow it down, you could say, and while here the actual invitation is to open it up. And so that, that is helpful and has everything to do with um, the possibility of a quantum leap. So the quantum leap would be that you, you ask what is life and you think that you come up with another definition, but actually you come into the experience of um, communication with the universe and you literally, for a moment, are like all over the place <laughs> in, in lots of light and love and not knowing what happened. So reformulating that back to your colleagues later on might be a little bit difficult. It's like, I have no idea what I experienced. I have no idea what I experienced. It's n I cannot put it into words, but I did experience life. And so that will be an invitation for for anyone to, to do the same in that sense, to, to join in that idea. So you see, this is what I'm trying to say, it's like everything is helping. So here Sri Aurobindo brings us into a, a place of the recognition that for this one instant, when your mind becomes total, total in acceptance or total in whatever experience, like for me it started with being in total fear, allowing myself to be totally fearful. In that a shift occurred. Like, I, w I didn't had no idea. Suddenly I shift into an experience of the perfection of this universe. I literally became whole in my fear. And was it fearful? No, not at all. So suddenly I experience, say, the universe. I, I experience the, yeah, the synchronicity, like there was such perfect synchronicity. There was a perfection that I had no idea about. Um, so this is what I mean. That is, that is your quantum leap. Everything comes to life if you come to it. Like if you allow to ask the question or to allow yourself to let one thing be total, whether it's your fear, whether it's your, it really does not matter. As long as it becomes total, you, you have not, you don't hold yourself back to, to go for it. You could say to like, okay, here I am, go take me. I don't, I'm not interested in holding back in any kind, it's like, take me. And you see that that brings you to a brand new experience, a quantum leap experience or an, a, a total moment that you experience in yourself. 
So yeah, this is great. Um, let's see. Sri Aurobindo, I got three paragraphs. Not that we have to do them all or anything, but it's great. So it is therefore, in the second paragraph, it's therefore through the utmost possible unification of spirit and matter that we shall best arrive at a reconciling truth and it's and so at some strongest foundation for a re re reconciling practice in the inner life of the individual and his outer existence we have found already in the cosmic consciousness a meeting place where matter becomes real to spirit and spirit becomes real to matter for in the cosmic conscious mind and life are in the intermediaries and no longer as they seem in the ordinary egotistic mentality agents of separation fomenters of an artificial quarrel between the positive and the negative principles of the same unknowable reality see i love the way this is expressed ordinary egotistic mentality agents of separation fomenters of an artificial quarrel between positive and negative like the dualistic thinking i love it attaining to the cosmic consciousness mind illumined by a knowledge that perceives at once the truth of unity and the truth of multiplicity and seizes on the formulae of their interaction finds its own discords at once explained and reconciled by divine harmony satisfied it consents to become the agent of that supreme union between god and life towards which we tend yeah i love it so we have found already in the cosmic consciousness a meeting place where mind where matter becomes real to spirit and spirit becomes real to matter and it's interesting that this is uh, used this term like say so they meet each other so and this is what you see in the course in miracles too is like mm, holy spirit is a bridge the bridge to the place where you specifically find yourself in an illusory state of three-dimensionality recognizing that there is something else wanting to get in touch with that and having an intermediator and comforter like jesus said i will send you a comforter and i need to go otherwise the comforter cannot come it's like literally like i'm not from here any longer like i cannot do this anymore but I'll send you a comforter and so not to stay in a state of three-dimensionality forever and having the spirit like no so in in our transformation in this say quantum light work we actually use this idea of uh, um, Holy Spirit um, also being called tachyon field of energy tachyon field of energy I, I saw when i was looking for videos related to tachyon energy that now there's a little machine you can use tachyon whatever um, thingy that you can buy of course and that will help you to yeah to solve your little problems here <laughs> to 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 make your muscles uh, loose again or something um, but i'm the tachyon field energy I'm talking about is is this bridge that um, that Sri Aurobindo is, is uh, sharing with us. It's like matter meets spirit, spirit meets matter. Like that's a bridge, that's a portal, that's a possibility for a quantum leap right there. So if we see this in the lessons too god is in everything that i see for instance this is one of the course in miracles lessons like god is in everything that i see well there's divinity in what i see if i don't say no longer say rely on my definitions of what everything is 
everything would bring me home because there literally is nothing opposing that except my ideas about it. So, so that is another um, say way of saying this. So I, I love it always how this comes together and how it is all one thing that is going on. So no matter who is speaking, sometimes you have to uh, say read a little bit um, or sit with it for a moment, especially here with this um, Sri Aurobindo language, you have to get into it a little bit. So he uses certain words that you might not be familiar with. But that's okay. So there's a real discovery to be made. An unknowable, which appears to us in many states and attributes of being, in many forms of consciousness, in many activities of energy, this is what mind can ultimately say about the existence which we ourselves are and which we see in all that is presented to our thought and senses. It is in and through those states, those forms, those activities that we have to approach and know the unknowable. But if in our haste to arrive at a unity that our mind can seize and hold, if in our insistence to confine the infinite, in our embrace, we identify the reality with any one definable state of being, however pure and eternal, with any particular attribute, however general and comprehensive, with any fixed formulation of con consciousness, however fast in its scope, with any energy or activity, however boundless in its, its application, and if we exclude all the rest, then our thoughts sin against its unknowableness and arrive not at a true unity, but at a division of the invisible, indivisible. So we arrive not at a true unity, but at a division of the indivisible. So an unknowable which appears to us in many states and attributes of being, in many forms of consciousness and in many activity of energy, this is what mind can ultimately say about the existence which we ourselves are and which we see in all that is presented to our thought and senses. If we take time, like it is in in and through those states, those forms, those activities that we have to approach and know the unknowable. But if we don't take time for it to let that occur, then we just cut everything into pieces, you could say, and never arrive at the true unity. But we try to devise the indivisible. We try to take one little part of it and think that that is it. So here it is like, take, allow this to speak. So the, the tendency then to fragment it, you could see this too in the science approach, is like you take a little part and now you say, examine that, try to define it. When you come to a uh, definition, a division really, a definition, you actually um, will not come to the unity with where it's coming from and you will miss the unity in it so so what i'm actually saying here is then this is not to attack science or anything no it's it's like an invitation to science to actually know this like to see this with my scientific mind to to go beyond my scientific mind and and see that if i stand still long enough if I'm actually taking time to see the wholeness and perfection in it, it will be shown to me. Like it, it is not rocket science. It is not difficult in that sense. No, the universe wants to show it to you. The only thing that was in the way were, were your ideas that it should be something else or that it has to look like this or that I use my protocol to do this and that or who knows what your limitation is. Like, now you're going to miss it. You're looking for unity. 
uh, you, your soul is crying for unity, for an experience of that recognition. Everyone's soul is crying for it, really, like no doubt. So if you listen to that cry and let yourself be guided by the universe in order to discover the wholeness of all, like the indivisible in front of you, then, then that can come to you. That would be the only way that it can come to you. That's where, say, spirit meets matter. That's where matter meets spirit. For one instant, you recognize the perfection and the perfection recognizes you. And there's your quantum leap. There's your moment of true recognition that affects everything. That literally is like the Big Bang starting all over again. <laughs> so I thought it was great to take a look at because um, say, I'm saying many times like none of this is real. It's like, no, that's right. None of this is real. Just for one moment, it is totally real. And that is when you say recognize the truth of you meeting the truth of reality at in the same place. That's where all of this is. And and without exception. And so just to to in fact um, feel the loveliness of that and also open your mind for that actual occurrence that it's not an, uh, a moment of exclusion no it's a moment of the totality the total inclusion of matter spirit perfection and seeing that they don't cancel each other out. No, this is your portal. This is your quantum leap into the unity that is yours. So, <laughs> I thought it was great. Uh, thank you. Thank you for, um, for being in this with me.